Hey guys, Harold Osmer, West Hills Wood. Beginner woodworking series. I keep having to say that. People keep wondering what I'm up to. Well, that's what it is. If you're just getting started, today we're going to talk a little bit about wood. Making wood small. Because when it's big, like a tree, you can't use it for anything in the house. So you, that's what woodworking is all about, making things small. In order to make things small to go together, you need to be able to cut it. There's a variety of ways of cutting it. Here's three different types of saws already. I mean, there's a coping saw, makes nice little cor cuts, corners, that kind of thing. Here's a flat saw with no kerf in it, which you got a ton of these kind of things. Mostly what you're going to want to be able to do is just dimension your lumber. You want to be able to cut a piece at eight inches repeatedly. And then you want to be able to put those pieces together using all those clamps that are so wonderful. You can do these things with 45 degree angles or do a basic butt joint at 90 degrees, that sort of thing. But the big trick is you have to get them down to the right size. And you can use all these handheld kind of things. That's fine. If you go the power tool route, you can do a lot of different stuff. We're going to talk briefly about that in just a minute. But if you're in an apartment or you're just getting started, you know, one way you can go about doing this sort of thing is you get yourself one of these guys. Ah. Now this looks like this one. I've had this for a long time. We um, use this for a number of window frame projects, that kind of thing. Works out really well. They have those little plastic boxes and the wood boxes and whatever else, and miter things you can cut straight and all. Those work reasonably well, but they're pretty clunky. This is a step up from that. I think it's like 50 bucks or whatever it is. A little handle here, you can rotate this so you can get repeatable cuts and stuff out of it. Something you want to think about though, as soon as you put a piece of wood in here and you start to cut, this is going to want to go all over the place. All right? If you go back and you look at the video previous to this, I tell you about getting a nice little table. This is our cheesy work table. And getting some clamps. Then, here you go. You think that clamps are just for holding your work pieces together? Not necessarily. They can also be used, and they should be used, to do this kind of thing. Because now when you go to cut, you can line this guy up and you can make real nice cuts. I'm kind of cramped in here, alright? I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes here. But you got the idea. You want to be able to hold your piece down and hold your thing steady. Now they got this little clamp on this side here. You can move it to both sides. It'll help hold your work piece in place so you can move the saw. You can cut them repeatedly, different things like this. I'm not going to show you how to do all the tricks on this saw, but that's uh, pretty much what something like this is about. All right? It's real straightforward. It's pretty simple. And then you can take it apart and go put all your pieces away to make your wife happy again so that you're not uh, taking up all the space in the kitchen. The power tool alternative to this, a direction a lot of guys wind up going, real quick. Something like that. Sometimes called a power miter saw, sometimes called a chop saw, it's the same thing. The idea is the same. You can rotate the blade, the plat, and the whole thing to get your 45 degrees or 90 or whatever you want to do. Now this one is power tool. It makes a lot of noise. You want to be extra careful with that. Now you're generating dust. You're really stepping up. It's one of the first, let's call it, power tools that people use. You know, it's not a handheld thing. And again, with this, and we'll show you in the next video, you want to be able to hold the sucker down to the table because you don't want this moving around. This is uh, pretty gnarly here. This, this thing can hurt you. So the other one, yeah. You'd have to be doing something really stupid for that one to hurt you. That wouldn't be unheard of in woodworking, though. Hey, Harold Osmer, West Hills Wood. See ya.